The U.S. Air Force announced Wednesday the F-15X Eagle II fighter has finished a key test and evaluation phase with the successful launch of air-to-air -air and air-to-ground standoff munitions. The data collected from the test could pave the way for a decision on full-rate production for the newest version of the Boeing May 4th generation fighter. The Air Force's two test F-15EX launched joint direct attack munitions, small diameter bombs, and joint air-to-surface standoff missiles during the combat hammer exercise that concluded August 25, the 53rd Wing told Defense News. The Wing carried out the exercise, meant to evaluation weapon systems, at Hill Air Force Base in Utah. Captain Lindsey Heflin, a spokeswoman for the Wing, said the weapons were employed during a wide range of scenarios. The Air Force said that the weapons used during the test represent the longest range air-to-air -air and air-to-ground standoff munitions in the U.S. military's arsenal and marked the completion of the F-15EX's first phase of integrated test and evaluation efforts. During that phase, the fighter took part in 19 large force events to test how well it could integrate with fifth-generation aircraft and fire other air-to-air -air and air-to-ground munitions, the Air Force said. In November 2022, for example, the F-15EX test-fired AM-120 advanced medium-range air-to-air missiles from two new weapon stations. The Air Force later said that test marked a step toward the fighter being able to carry up to 12 missiles, more than any other F-15 variant. Major Calvin Connor, F-15 Division Commander for the 53rd Wing's 85th Test and Evaluation Squadron, said in a service statement that the exercise showed the F-15EX was able to employ three joint air-to-surface standoff missiles. Now that the F-15EX's first integrated test and evaluation phase is done, the Air Force said its Operational Test and Evaluation Center as well as the Pentagon's Director of Operational Test and Evaluation Office will analyze the collected data. This data will be used to help make a decision on full-rate production for the fighter in the months to come. Everything went perfectly, providing us with the data proving the EX could easily employ three JSFs in combat, the spokesperson said, clarifying that only one JSSM was actually shot. The JASM shot was executed concurrently with the 53rd Wing's Weapons System Evaluation Program, WSEP, which required a collaborative effort between the 83rd and 86th Fighter Weapons Squadrons. The F-15EX is the first ever Air Force aircraft to undergo an integrated test and evaluation program. The combination of the IOT and E and DLT and E effort is unique to the program in that existing test data from the legacy F-15C-D and F-15E can be compared with data from the new EX, with special focus on the EX's unique new features, such as its advanced processor and fly-by-wire control system. The EX also has more weapon stations than the F-15E, allowing it to carry more ordnance. The idea behind concurrent DOT and E and IOT and E is to save time and field the F-15EX as quickly as possible, as it is replacing F-15C-Ds that must be withdrawn from service because of structural fatigue. The 53WG's goal is to deliver a fielding recommendation to Air Combat Command for the F-15EX as quickly as possible and executing testing with a fully integrated DT-OT team is the best way to do it, the 53rd spokesperson said. She said the B-21 Barber program will undergo a similarly accelerated and combined developmental and initial operational test effort. In November 2022 test, the EX demonstrated it can carry up to 12 AM-120 AM RAAM air-to-air missiles. The Air Force plans to buy 104 F-15EX, although that number could rise to 110 if some changes to the fiscal year 2024 defense bill are enacted. The Air Force was originally expected to start taking deliveries beyond the first two test aircraft earlier this year, but quality issues at Boeing Street Louis Mole plant have caused a six-month delay in handing over the initial production jets. According to a June audit by the Government Accountability Office, Boeing workers misdrilled some of the holes on initial production aircraft canopies, requiring rework. The 85th Test and Evaluation Squadron carried out the tests, alongside the 53rd Wing's 83rd and 86th Fighter Weapons Squadrons. 
If you enjoy content like this, please like and subscribe this video as I appreciate all your support.